as much as he plays the puck, he's not going to play it perfectly each time. And there it hits a stick and poked through here. And Lambert is going to get the puck here. And Jerry's made two great glove saves. And here's another one. He just gets his, the corner of his glove on it. And again, uh, just a super save from 15 feet. You're at the shooter's mercy. And he's, his reflexes have been very quick. He's looked just sharp. And, uh, you know, he's really kept him in there. Chevers, uh, you mentioned confidence. He looks more and more confident as the game is going along. And now, as we thank Chico Resch, we turn things over to our play-by-play -play announcer, Danny Gallivan. Okay, Dan and Chico, Canadians are back on the ice. And Boston has not as yet put in an appearance. Score tied at a goal. While I have a moment, I'd like to make this announcement. The Port Elgin Kinsman's Club's 8th Annual Voyager Days Weekend is scheduled for Saturday, May 20th and Sunday the 21st. We all know the great work that that type of club does, so we recommend to the people of Port Elgin the patronage of the 8th Annual Voyager Days Weekend. Okay, Chico, you're safely back with me. Score tied 1-1. Boston, its chief aim, of course, is to get a split in the two games here. Canadians realize if they lose this when they're going into a tough rink in Boston. So what's going to happen? Well, of course, we don't know, do we? But we, I, I would say that Boston would, must be pretty happy with the situation they're in now. And uh, I think they're going to they're going to continue to play it tight, at least for the first 10 minutes, and then kind of look for that break in the last 10 minutes. Of course, if Montreal, either team scores, it would cause it to open it up a little bit. One thing I want to point out, though, Danny, does it seem to you that the, the players seem to be stick handling more tonight, carrying the puck rather than dumping it in, which has become so predominant in our game? And of course, it's before my time, but you you would know. Uh, it seems to me it'd be more like the old time hockey I hear everybody talk about. Uh, particularly, I thought in the second period, they were making plays, they were holding it, not coming to center and getting rid of it, and then running in after it. Makes for very exciting hockey. Oh, that is the hockey. And now let us see what will eventuate here in this the third period. And it's Lafleur feeding it in. The Boston Territory Park in there chasing him is shot. And on the boards they go. Jonathan cleared it. He had the most shots over two periods. Number 17 did. He had four for Boston. Now it's Milbury. Lafleur is in there doing four checking for the Canadians. Out it comes to the line. It's kept in. Now it's slapped off the boards and picked up by Park. Park ahead to Jonathan. He hits the Montreal line. He's stick checked by Savard. Lafleur handing it off to Robinson. Robinson getting it through center. Lafleur didn't see it down the ice. It goes. And Cheever's leaving it there. And it's picked up by Milbury. Canadians have made changes already in this the third period. Now up to the line it goes to McNabb. McNabb to O'Reilly, peeking in on that left side. There's the shot, high, high, with Dryden going down, and he holds on. What have you there? What statistic is that, Chico? Well, this is a statistic that isn't mentioned very often, but sometimes it's more indicative of the play than the actual shots on goal. And we have a total of 39 shots by Boston and 36 by Montreal. And as we were saying, you notice that a lot of sh shots have gone wide. And there's only been uh, 19 by Boston and 13 by, by, excuse me, by the Canadians on goal, but they've taken many more shots. It's whipped around the net by LaPointe. Ganey is bumped solidly by Doe. LeBrun's moving in again. Number 14 is Miller. He's after LaPointe. who pulls away from the Boston forward. Over to Ganey. It's at the line. Here's LaPointe taking a look. Fired it into the slot. Smith was there to gobble it up, and Ganey at the line, feeding it back. There's Mondu. Cheevers out of the net. Now Ganey has it. Back along the boards it goes. Here is Rajan Oud to the other side. Oud trying to get by Rick Smith. He does. And Smith finally comes up with it. He goes to center with Marcotte. The point has it swept off his stick by Smith. Nyrock feeding it to Ganey on the left side at the Canadians' line. Cornway is moving up, and it's cleared into the corner. Mondu after Milbury. LeBrun shooting it to center, spinning around Savard. He fired it off the corner glass. Lombert, Mondu, and Cornway, the line for the Canadians. 
Here's Lambert. In for Cornwallier. Park was there to deflect it to the corner. Now it's Lambert. Bumped in on the board by Milbury. They get the whistle and the play is stopped. From the Forum in Montreal, this is Stanley Cup 78. The challenge of the unknown. Some men go out of their way to find it. But one thing they won't take a chance on is the way they look. So they use Brill Cream. Brill Cream conditions hair. Keeps it looking healthy, natural. Keeps you confident you're looking your best. Brill Cream. For men who'll take a chance on just about anything but the way they look. Two minutes. 23 seconds have been played, the third period. Rattel against Jarvis, and again Rattel got the faceoff. Boston has won its share, certainly of faceoffs in this game tonight. Here's Risebrough clearing it in, and it is called on the offside. Peggy Risebrough with the rather large lower lip, a souvenir of the puck which struck him in the early part of the fourth game of the semifinal series against the Maple Leafs in Toronto. Boston won, Montreal won. Milbury, long lead pass. That will be icing with Robinson touching it. Now there is John Rattel, no doubt a very, very big bat for the Bruins. He has scored over 80 points in each of his last four seasons. He had 84 this past year. I wonder if he has the longest name, Danny, in the NHL. Joseph Gilbert Yvonne Jean Rattel. He's from the House of Royalty. <laughs> he has to be with a name for that. How many names have you, Chico? Johnny nickname? Are we counting? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Next day, don't count. Oh. Gary Allen, is it? That's right. Close. Glenn Gary Allen. Uh, drop the Gary and you're right on the money. But just Glenn Allen. I, I, I want to keep things simple. What's going on down here? There's a half oh. of about the face off. Who's moving and who isn't? And Bob Ganey and Gary Doak seem to be the reason for that small gathering of the clan. From the face-off, again the Bruins getting the draw. Middleton deflected it out. The bird over to Robinson. Here's Ray Jean Uhl returning it to Robinson. Robinson, a fine pass. Jarvis is docked to the ice by Smith and the Bruins clearing it in. Look at the Bruins, all well in over the Canadian line. Now it goes to Savard, a long pass on the right side. Smith clearing it ahead to Rattel, and it is called on the offside. Rattel showing a pretty good skill of backing the puck out of the air that time as it was fired up from the Boston zone. A look at the Bruins bench, and they have certainly come up with a much stronger effort tonight than was the case in game one. Mike Milbury with a bit of a grin on the end of the bench. They were a bit tired. Ken Dryden's theory, Danny, was that the Bruins might have felt good at the start of that game Saturday, but coming off that series with Philadelphia just 48 hours before, he said they were... Fatigue would catch them early, and it looks like that's what happened. Well, the Bruins look very, very spry here tonight, and there's Rattel dropping it by. Smith into the center ice area. Fades to the right side. And again, an offside. So we have a fair frequency of whistles in the early minutes of this third period. Does that mean they're playing it rather cautiously? I would say so. I think they dumped the puck in almost as much in the first four minutes almost as they did in the first two periods. And I think, and it's interesting because Montreal's got into that pattern also. Well, a goal at any stage here in this third period could be disastrous against the team. He gives up the goal. Nyrop coming out on the right side. At center, losing it to Milbury. He gets clear of it. There's the point. Handing it off to Lafleur. Lafleur's pass knocked down by Smut. Here is Smut, backhand shot. And Dryden gets a whistle and a face off in the Canadian zone, two seconds away from the fourth minute mark into the third period. Kenny Dryden will not get a shutout tonight, but he is standing at 10 shutouts in Stanley Cup play. The young Canadian fan with the pennant in back of the Montreal net, face off now in the Canadian zone. Dryden at the right of your screen, and that familiar pose appears. The Bruins with the defense. 
defense of Millbury and Park well in over the Canadian side. They've been getting a lot of face-offs. Let's see if they get that when they go. Here's Scott turning on the Jets, coming in. Good defensive play by Park. Now it comes from the left side, Old Cabard. He slapped Marcotte at the Boston line, and the Bruins are called for icing. I guess Marcotte was not looking, Chico. Now That's they are, Bruins are yelling for interference on that one, Chico. Don Cherry might have a point. I don't think Marcotte had touched the puck so hard and leveled him with a shoulder check at the line. Among the players, we call this a suicide pass because the pass is behind Marcotte, and he isn't looking, he's looking behind him. And you see, it could have been a, an interference call because Marcotte did not touch the penalty, which the rules say he has to or else it's interference. There is Don Cherry. He does not molly coddle his team. He's a strict disciplinarian, but they have great respect for Cherry. Here's Robinson shooting it. And he whipped it off the glass. Miller knocking it into the center ice area. Lafleur is forced back by Marcotte. Marcotte staying with him. Now Lafleur giving it to Robinson. The score is tied at a goal in the third period. Robinson to Ray Jan Uhl over on the right side. It's whipped in by LeMaire. Lafleur up and down by Milbury. And the Canadian supporters thought there should have been a penalty there. Boston clearing it to center. Robinson ahead to Ray Jan Uhl, turning with Lafleur and LeMaire. Over it goes to the Boston line, cleared in by LeMaire and Lafleur. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Montreal Forum. Every summer night seems like a battle you never win. Then fight back with a secret weapon. Strong, effective STP insect repellent and killers. Battle the bugs with STP. Take command. Available at these stores. CBC covers the Commonwealth Games August 3rd to August 12th. Outside the Boston line. The cab against Risebrow. Canadians got the draw, but it went on to the stick of Jonathan, who pumped it into the Canadian zone. Savard around the net trying to shake off O'Reilly. Now Savard takes a look. There's a pass to Lambert. Broken up on that pass off a stick by O'Brien, who pumped and knocked Lambert to the ice. Here's McNabb. McNabb over the line. Low shot wide. Robinson clearing it to the board. O'Reilly going after it. Still after it. Pass out is gobbled up by Lambert. He can't get out. The Bruins keeping it in. It's off O'Reilly's stick. Now at center. O'Reilly with it. He has McNabb on the right side. And Cornwallier got the door. Oh, Lambert. What a check he took from O'Brien. And O'Brien is going to go off. Elbowing is likely going to be the call. This is Stanley Cup 78 from the Montreal Forum. an important moment in the hockey game. Dennis O'Brien has been penalized for elbowing. And here's why. At five minutes, 37 seconds. He corked Yvonne Lambert, but good. I noticed that as that was all transpiring. Evan Cornway of the Canadians was heading toward the Canadians' dressing room. Canadians on the power play. Here's the point. Firing it in, and the feet in there. There is shot behind the net. It goes to Ray Jean. Oh, back to Laporte. He winds up. Oh, Cheevers blocked that one brilliantly. Lafleur getting it back to Lemaire. He stands on it. Here is Shepard getting it right. Laporte is back to Shepard. Shepard is going in a goal. And Shepard is on the corner. Now he's got the cross. He takes the shot. Driving again. And Driving covers up. What Stevens action down there in the Canadian zone. Canadians had only 
one shorthanded goal against them all season, Chico, but they get awfully close to one right there. A uh, nice play here by Greg Shepard from start to finish. He steals the puck off Lemaire, and he'll take a quick look over here and see LaPointe coming at him. And LaPointe dies, and Kenny again, using good stick work here, poke checks him and knocks it off in the corner, and he thinks he's out of trouble, but no, that's just a start because I. Well, here's another look at it. Again, a good poke check by Kenny. Any kids watching, that's the way the poke check should be played. And, of course, they had another good chance immediately following that. A minute and 28 seconds remaining in the O'Brien penalty. And it was Boston since this penalty has been assessed that had the great scoring opportunities. Now LaFleur in full flight. He's down. He's in over the line. Park is after LaFleur. A blur around the net to the corner, taken in on the board, heavily by Park. Now it's Marcotte cutting in on the left side, and Dryden covers up. Here's Clark, and it's on the back, and Dryden takes it away. A rolling puck off the stick of Spot. The point ahead, the shot cut. Oh, the penalty for tripping coming up against the Montreal Canadiens. LaFleur is going off for tripping. Comes with 54 seconds left in the Boston penalty to O'Brien, and I wonder, Chico, that was a delayed reaction on the part of LaFleur. Might have been upset with the check by Park, which was a great check. Nothing wrong with it, but it did the job. Well, that's right. And you know, I noticed on the first goal that, or I think it was the third goal that the Canadians scored the other night, Guy Lafleur actually acts as a pick where he'll get in the way of the defenseman. And I think what he was trying to do was kind of run a little interference there well, this is the earlier shot by Marcotte. A good save by Kenny. And then, of course, the puck in the corner, but it's thrown back out front, and he makes another good save here. And it's just Bobby great Scott action. All along. Again, a good kick save. And, you know, it's hard to tell who's got the power play. It's just been <laughs> going up and down. So the manpower situation has been equalized. There's a battle day for Lafleur. Now Nairob shooting it in. O'Brien, however, with 40 seconds left, and Fur with 145. Into the corner, Doak against Jarvis. They might get a whistle. Well, they do. You know, Chico in Detroit in the third game of the Canadians Red Wing series. Canadians got a penalty in the first period and then proceeded to score two shorthanded goals. Somebody yelled out the next time Montreal got a penalty, he yelled out Red Wings declined the penalty. <laughs> Twelve minutes and fifty-eight seconds remain in the third period. Now Savard comes over to take over on this side to take the place of Nyrop on the left point. Montreal, everybody up for the face-off between Jarvis and Rital. And again, we have a situation where a couple of players got rather over enthusiastic. I have reference to Ganey and Dolk when they move prematurely. Now Ganey and Dope getting sticked up on each other. Back it goes from Ganey's stick, and it's out over the line, down to Dryden. Now there are just 25 seconds left in the O'Brien penalty, and barring further penalties, the Bruins then will have the advantage right now it's by the side. Here's Jarvis getting it over to La point, broken up by Milbury. Middleton going after it against the bird. Jarvis clearing it out over the line. Milbury back into Rattel. Over it comes to Middleton. Knocked away from him by Ganey. And it is Sever taking his time. To La point. O'Brien is out of the penalty box. And now the broom. Well, the advantage for a minute and two seconds. Sever sending it down the ice. Scores tied at a goal. And this is the third period nearing the midway mark. Up on the right side, it is Middleton. Cashman is on the far side. Canadians breaking it up. Rajan U rolled it back. Here's Brad Park, the leader of the Boston team. Park over it goes to Smith on the right side to O'Reilly. O'Reilly into Smith. He got rid of it, and Savard shoots it down the air. Beavers got a jump on the play by clearing it up on the right side to O'Reilly. O'Reilly to McNabb. In over the line, Cashman. Cashman on the backhand. Savard knocked it away. McNabb falls. It's loose. Ray Zanul. Gets it down the end. 
And the penalty time remaining a half dozen seconds. The Bruins are not going to have time for another power play rush. Now LaFleur is back on the ice. Robinson clearing it ahead. LaFleur goes to the bench. Here's Park going to the Canadian slide, putting on the break. Canadian starting out. Rise by the Cornwire. Rise by going in. And he's fired and wide. He used Cornwire as the decoy. Now it's Cashman. Back in on the right side, rubbed in on the boards by Robinson. O'Reilly pulls it, rise goal. Cornwire over to Lemaire. Here's Lemaire. Shooting it across the line, and Coach fired it out. And the fans over there behind that glass to the left of the Canadian players' bench did some ducking. Now, Joe Pump Lambert knocked him down. Here's McNabb at the line. He lost it. And the stick was above the shoulder making contact. With the score, Boston 1, Montreal 1. This is Stanley Cup 78. Presenting the widest range of wagon sizes from Ford. We've got ideas for working wagons, for wagons that are fun. Ideas that give you lots of room, ideas for everyone. Pinto, Fairmont, LTD. From the peppy little Pinto to the full-size LTD and roomy Fairmont, nobody offers a wider range of wagon sizes than your Ford dealer. See him now. The better ideas keep coming from Ford, the wagon master. Mondu of the Canadians out there now. He hasn't seen that much action. The Canadians have had only three shots at the goal in this period. Only one has found the target. Boston has had eight shots directed toward Ken Dryden, and they have connected on four. Here's that last break. Reisbrow and Ivan Cornwayer. and some of the fans got on Doug Reisbrow after this one a bit, as he elected to shoot on the play, and he missed the net. Is that deflected on the way, Chico? I it sure tell. looks like it. Yeah, yeah it changed directions in front there. Must have hit Rick Smith's stick. You know, we are just 32 seconds away from two and a half periods of hockey in this second game, and Montreal has been limited to 14 shots. Boston has 22. Boy, it, it's hot up here. It's one thing I know, and you know the winter is finally over. I think the down Mandy Condition, Nova Scotia, they're making plans for next winter. Big campaign for a curling rink. <laughs> and I know that you wish they'll get many financial aid enters in that campaign, Chico. Oh, I'm always on the side of a good cause, and anything yeah, they... Yeah, you like curling, don't you? That's right. That was my sport. I had to make a decision to whether it be a pro hockey player or a pro curler, and I well, picked hockey. Not, not too much money in curling. Well, it's getting, though, it's, you can <laughs> at least make a living. Okay. Up on the left side. Marcotte couldn't get anywhere. Milbury against Cornwye. Mondu knocked it down. Lombard fired it in. Not too much on it. O'Brien clearing it. Mondu couldn't get it. Now LaPointe played it back in. At the line, Lombert shooting it back. On the move is number six, Mondu jammed in on the board. Here's Cornwye centering it. It went by Lombert on the lip of the crease. Lombert bumped his net. He's on the lead of the net. Big save by Cheevers. Bouncing puck. And Milbury has it. Milbury ahead to Miller into the center right area. Over it goes to Mark Cox. He carries it off the board. Dryden active. Now it's back in, out over the line. Dolt waiting for his teammates to get on side, and he's cleared it over the glass. You know, less than 10 minutes to go in regulation time, 9.29. You know, I would think that every team in the league should get a tape of this game and, and show it, because Boston has just played so well the whole game and really shut off the Canadian attack. Well, game three and four in Boston, Thursday night and Sunday night, and we'll be on the air on both occasions, 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, games three and four, come to you from the Boston Garden. That's Bobby Schmott at the end of the Boston bench with some kind of difficulty. They fight for that center. Somebody, who was it just hit Schmott? Oh, but he took a solid body check. I'm trying to recall. Lambert, I think it was. Not sure. Lambert? Not sure. And he looks a little doubled over there. It looks like it might be his win. I don't think it's a knee or, or anything that should keep him out of the rest of the game. So the team's making changes. Danny mentioned it is warm, and it's getting warmer in this building. It's been a long night for some of these players. Now, the Bruins make a belated change as far as their defense is concerned, but referee Newell says no. Cashman argues the point. O'Brien and Brad Park tried to get onto the ice. Don Cherry concedes the point, and they're ready to go. 
9.24 left in the third period. Dope slides it over to Rick Smith. And Cashman whipping it in on the left wing. Here's O'Reilly going in after Robinson, who gets it out. LaFleur. LaFleur passed it, and it was right on to the stick of McNabb. And the Bruins keeping the pressure on the Canadians, shooting it in, going in after him. Robinson is getting some skating room. Robinson over it goes to Shushup going in. And there it was Stokes again. He was able to get over and get that stick on the shot in the play. You know, there was a play in the second period when Gary Doak was the lone defenseman back on a three and one break. The play went on for so long afterwards, we didn't get a chance to replay it or really comment on it. That was just a super defensive play, and he makes another pretty good one right here. I think he, he epitomizes what the Boston Bruins are all about. Second effort, getting the job done, you know, not being that pretty, but like I say, he's, how many times have you seen him flat on his stomach just like that, blocking a shot or deflecting a shot? And in Boston, they have rewarded him with the seventh player award on several occasions. Now the Canadians getting it back to the point. Here's the point, shooting it in. And Stevers, very happy to get a face off in his own zone 842 left did he take that marking pencil chico and put another mark on there the other night <laughs> like you thought he would when he gets corked in the mask well i won't give away his secrets how he does it <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he should have scoring in the hockey game park for boston shot for montreal now it comes to Middleton. He hands it off to Jonathan. Jonathan holds it, holds it, feeds it in there to the short side. Middleton centering it. Dryden very alert in goal, cleared it back. Here's Wittell out in front, and the point starting out. Down on the left side it goes. Ganey after Park Middleton turning at the Boston line. Having difficulty against Jarvis, shooting it in. Wittell with the point. Shooting it off the board. Park feeding it back in. And the Bruins strategy, you can see it. Stay up there on top of the Canadians. And there's Rattel doing that. Out it comes on the left side. Ganey out to Ray Zan Ool with Jarvis. Over to Jarvis. A good pass. Back to Ganey. He fires. He a sharpshooter but you won't see a better shot than this here it's hard to tell it appears that he may use park as a screen here i'm not sure but he gets good wood on it and up high just in the crook of gary's catching hand and like i say just a super shot that maybe didn't look that difficult from up here but we'll see from behind here it i think he, he got more on it than both gary and maybe even bob expected and it kind of surprised him so Montreal in front, 2-1, 7.40 left in regulation time. There's Mark Hodge against LaFleur. LaFleur getting it out to shot. Shot still with it, hands it off to Lemaire to LaFleur. He has to chase it off the board. Now O'Brien. Up on the board, Robinson keeping it in to Lemaire. Here's LaFleur over on the other side. Pass was too hard. It got by shot. He was in the clear. They just got me something. They got me away. And the Steelers diving from there. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Forum in Montreal. How are sales in Toronto, Brian? The essential thing about a meeting is you meet. What if you can't? One of the most ingenious ways of getting together is in not going anywhere at all. The conference call. Same situation in Calgary, Frank? Different people in different cities. All connected simply by one of you dialing zero and asking for the conference operator who sets the whole thing up. Dennis, would your boys in San Francisco agree? If you have to have a meeting and can't go, call the conference operator and have it anyway. And there you have the scoring play at 12-12. Bob Ganey, his second goal of the playoffs. Poole and Jarvis assisting. 
Face off in deep Boston territory. Rise uh, against McNabb. Now it's back to Cornwallie. Cornwallie plays it behind the net. Cheevers trying to get it up to a player. Canadians keeping it in. Here's Risebrow. They fight for it. Risebrow still with it. Takes a look. Hart knocked it down. Out to Lombardo. And it's up to Cornwallie. Cheevers chasing it. And Risebrow tried to tip in a wide shot by Cornwallie. That was beautiful to watch Cheevers going after him. It may have been dangerous, Chico, but it was exciting. It's over the glass. Tell us about the maneuvering by Cheevers. <laughs> well, I got to say, that is an original move. I have never seen anything like that before. And that's one thing about Jerry. He always gives you a little bit more than you pay for. And here it is here. He would have followed Cornway all the way to the Boston bench if he would have had to. Just like a defenseman. He just hangs in there, hangs in there. He would have... He just about stopped it with his back, but he just hung in there till the last minute. And it doesn't really matter whether you stop the puck as long as you force the player to either shoot wide or hit you with it. And Jerry made just a great save. Two in a row, really. Here it is again. Not pretty. Gets the job done. That's all you can ask. Cornway's even laughing. He can't believe it. He's never seen anything like that. <laughs> well, he hung him out to dry there for a few seconds. Now... Jonathan, there's a long shot. Boston's 23rd. Montreal now is 18. Canadians are leading the Bruins 2-1. to one. This is the third period. 6-18 left. Here's Ganey. In over the line. He's body. Huck is loose. Jonathan is upended by Jarvis. Here is Middleton. Getting rid of it through the center ice area. Pouncing on it is the point. And now you'll see Montreal moving up. Trying to get... The Bruins tied up in their own zone. They're all in there. The forward. Cool. Lemaire now Ganey goes off and Lafleur comes on. Boston with a line of Middleton. Rattel and Jonathan. Here's Rick Smith bringing it back in for Middleton. Middleton tied up neatly by Nyrop. Good defensive play by Nyrop. Number two. And it was gloved. It was gloved tight. Almost cast in on an errant pass off the stick of Guy Lafleur, but Bill Nyroff, the big fellow from Dyna, Minnesota, via Notre Dame University, made the defensive play, as Danny mentioned, and he hung on to the bitter end. Hey, so he's a off. very, very improved player, isn't he? He is. A little trivia question. Do you, you, I think everybody realized he once tried out for the Notre Dame football team, but do you know which position? Quarterback. That's right. That says a little bit about the mobility, and he's not considered one of the, the, the best mobile defense when the Canadians have, but he was a quarterback, and you know they have to be mobile. You know who beat him out? Uh, no, I don't. Tom Clements. Oh, yeah. Right now the Ottawa Rough Riders. Yeah. Another trivia question. <laughs> You're two up. <laughs> Chico, this dick is amazing. Isn't oh, he? is he? What a man. <laughs> now Robinson clearing it. Out it comes into the center ice area. It's whipped off a leg by Smut. Robinson ahead to shot. He looks over on the other side, taking on the skate of Lemaire, making that head fake. In it goes, and Lafleur was skating the other way. Brad Park, he is the lone Boston goal. Ganey and shut, having scored for Montreal. A fake pass by Milbury to Marcotte. Marcotte in over the line, back to intending that one for Smots. It ends up in the corner. Robinson, now less than five minutes to go. Canadians getting rid of it. Down the ice it goes icing. That is not a particularly good thing to ice the puck at this stage, is it, Chico? You haven't got time, Dick. Live from the farm in Montreal, the Stanley Cup playoff. No, no, I mean, get away, make your getaway from the city. Fifty years, more people in the world have been getting away with Johnson's than with any other outboard. Well, the two coaches who were co-coaches for Team Canada in 1976, and since then have opposed one another twice in a row in the Stanley Cup final. Keep going off with these ices. You got about ten seconds. Well, Montreal's tying them up well in the center zone, so they don't want to give them an advantage by having to face off deep in their own zone. And they're doing that right now, and there's Rick Smith firing a shot that's gone. Here's Cornwallier. He has actually seen Cornwallier going in. And a scintillating maneuver 
by Cheevers. The scrimmage guard right over the top of the corner. Stopped at point blank range on the lip of the crease by Cheevers. How about that, Cheevers, on these two corn YA scoring efforts? Two to one. Montreal leading Boston. Now the Bruins coming in. There's O'Reilly. O'Reilly trying to drop it back. He does. Here's Cashman on the board. Cashman getting it out in front. And he scores! The Bruins have tied it up. And who is that? Rick Smith, is it? Rick Smith came in from his defensive position. Well, you miss them at one end, you put them in at the other. And the big save by Jerry Cheevers. Kept the Canadians off the board, and the Bruins come right back. Rick Smith in deep, not usually in that spot. Chico Resch, and the Bruins have tied the game 2-2. Talk about the value Terry O'Reilly has. Here he drops the puck. Now the puck's going to go behind the corner on the other side of Kenny, and Cashman's in there digging. It comes out front. Rick Smith actually kind of missed the puck, but he got enough on it to shoot it in the far corner, and sometimes that throws a goalie off by, not, by the player not getting full wood on the shot. If the Bruins go on the only one fellow responsible, Gary Cheever. Oh, he deserves Almost it. Almost saves down there on Cornwall. Oh, that's no, no question about it. Just one after the other, you know. It's, well, there's the three now where he fought, where he challenged Cornway earlier, and then two there back to back. They've, uh, Canadians have only had 20 shots, but they've all been so tough here. Kenny just doesn't get enough wood on it, and Rick Smith slides it in the corner. 4-12 left in regulation time. This has to be no question about it, a big, big lift for Boston. Oh, yes, yes. It's going to be interesting to see now if they don't sit back. I, I think they should take the play to Montreal. Now, Canadians starting out. Lafleur on the right side, going after Cashman. Montreal with Lemaire, Shot and Lafleur. The Bruins with McNabb. O'Reilly and Cashman. Score tied at two goals. There's Park with the look. Ahead it goes, and it's called on the offside, and with 3.47 to go, and the scarcity of goals in this game, you have to say that overtime moves are ever large. I agree. Scoring play, Rick Smith from Cashman and McNabb at 15.48, and that makes it 2-2. The point I was trying to make, Danny, with 3.47 left, you're almost into overtime, and so you're going to have to score the next goal, and I think Boston should try and carry the play to Montreal. Now on the right side, Smut shooting it in. Savard is in there, watched by number 19, Shepard, a pass to Robinson. Here's Robinson gathering speed on the right side. He can move. Robinson over the line, trying to get in there, knocked off balance, and then knocked to the ice. And they're going to get a whistle for a face-off to the right of Beavers. Every face-off in the end now is so very, very important. And as you said earlier, Boston's had great success in the face-off tonight. And as you say, that could decide it. Uh, especially with the, with the point men that Montreal have. So Montreal, with Robinson and Savard on the point, Lemaire against Shepard. That is what they call, in hockey jargon, a false start. Robinson has had an outstanding playoff. Not only in one series, every series. There's the bird shooting it in. It's off a body. In there goes shot. It's center. Look first shooting it. Oh! He missed the open side. Now it's back off a stick into the center ice area. What an opportunity to Fleur had. He was in at a fairly bad angle. Now on the right side. But. Clearing it behind the net, it's centered in front. Canadian. Pass on the left side by Lemaire, down the ice it goes, Cheevers. Gave it to Dope, Dope winding up, up on the left side. Marcotte got rid of it. Now then, Savard in on the boards against Shepard. And they get a whistle. On that last play, Dan, uh, Jerry didn't make the save. But when you see Lafleur there all alone, it can be very intimidating. But Jerry hung with him, and he forced him to shoot it wide. And you got to pat him on the back, even though he did make the save. In other words, it's the angle. You get by him in that area, and if it got by him, it had to be wide. Exactly, and he knew it. Now with two minutes and 35 seconds left in regulation time, Jonathan ahead to Rattel. 
And it is called on the outside. The biggest crowd of the playoffs on hand for tonight's game, 17,426. Just a note, yeah, that was Rick Smith's first goal in this year's playoffs and second of his pro career. Well, he's got to be terribly happy over the turn of events. And he had a rough time in the first game. He got three goal, three penalties in the first period. It, they scored two goals while he was off. And I, I thought uh, overall his game tonight has been rather solid. And then to cap it off with that goal to tie it has to be a big, big thing for Rick Smith. Well, it is. And you know, the, the uh, Bruins have scored three goals in this final. And the uh, defensemen have scored them all. And, you know, that's what's so exciting about the playoffs. Someone that hasn't, you know, like it says here, he hasn't scored a goal, and that's his 57th game without scoring a goal. Now it's picked up on middle to the deuce and a big save by Bryden. Oh, no. Myrop has been injured, and what a chance there for the Bruins to take the lead as Middleton with perseverance, took the puck away. I think he took it away from Nyrop, didn't he? He did, and that's what caused the injury. As he lifted, or attempted to lift Nyrop's stick, his stick came up and hit Bill in the uh, face, hopefully not the eye, but it appears that he was struck in the face. And, uh, you know, that's a scary thing, just because with the stick and, and the force you try and lift the player's stick with is quite severe, and if you happen to miss his stick, like Middleton, did there and, and it hit uh, Bill Nyrod flush on the face. Here it is again here. You'll see here he's going to attempt to lift the stick but he missed and boom he, he struck him in the eye and of course the referee can't call whistle the play dead till Montreal has possession or touches the puck and that resulted in a good chance. It's very unfortunate about these eye uh, injuries. You know most of them are accidental. Oh yes, yes. Anything to do with the stick and, and the stick uh, up around the face is always accidental but you know it's amazing the way the body's built with the eye built back in the eye socket it's just incredible how many times the players are just nicked above the eye on the nose but very seldom do you see the player actually struck in the eye that's a rather interesting observation dr right <laughs> well it's probably not but uh no it, you... it, it is uh, i never thought of it that way but it is so true the number of sticks that find that area yet the very few serious eye in Yes, thanks for bailing me out on that, but but, it, but it's true, Dan, and, and again, I think Bill looks fine. It looks like it was just a cut, and he'll probably get stitches and, and play the rest of the game or the overtime if, if it leads to that. But here it is again. See, you'll, you'll see him come up hard here, so you know he, has struck, he struck him hard, and again, it was just an accidental thing, and really unfortunate. Well, we'll try and get word as quickly as is possible, and we all hope and there is nothing serious on that injury, certainly no eye injury. Now the face-off in the Canadian zone. They jam in there, falling on the ice, and again, a face-off to the left of Dryden. And Dryden, uh, we forgot to sort of rehash that save he made on Middleton. Uh, he stood at Brown there. Middleton got a pretty good shot away. He was in fairly close. That's right. Every save at this stage is a big save, and uh, that's the first probably of, of a couple that we're going to see here. Often when you see the goalie does not move, uh, people say, well, he didn't, they hit him. But it's the goalie coming out and cutting down the angle, isn't it? That's right, that's right. Now rolls into Dryden off for a tell stick. People just continually trying to put the goalies down, Dan. We've got to fight for everything we've gotten. And uh, when you make a good save, you know, it, it was usually lucky or else, like you say, it hit the goalie. Or if you force a guy to shoot wide, you say the guy shot wide. But nine times yeah. out of the ten, it's... It's a good play by the Since goalie. working with you up here, I feel now I'm fairly well disposed toward the goalie. Uh, you feel that I'm being biased, do you? No, 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 no. I think you're terribly truthful. Yes, well, uh, <laughs> I do too. Here's the face-off. Robinson with it into the corner. Robinson gets it out to Jarvis. He's checked. Here's Rittell. Couldn't get a shot. Rooms are buzzing around. They drop it back, and the Canadians in possession. Bull clearing it to the corner. Jonathan and Robinson in there. Here's Middleton trying to center it. Rattel waiting for the net. Oh, Dryden went down and picked on it, and it went bouncing. Jamie bumping Jonathan. That was a very, very close call. The, the Bruins are very aggressively. They are. They've taken the play away, and like I said, I think they feel that they'd like to end it 
if they could naturally before the end of the period, but I think they like their chances with a minute 29 rather than, you know, playing it safe. Here you'll see it. Again, Kenny made a good save with a stick and it just bounced away from Jonathan, but really the last three minutes, all the plays have been down in the uh, Canadian's end. You realize the Canadians had not been out of their zone since they were called on that ice team. That's right, that started it, and you, and you mentioned that. It, it's, it's more than the icing, it, it's the train of thought you get into. You start thinking defense, and that's what they were doing. And now, let us see, it'll be Shepard against Lemaire. Lemaire shot in Lafleur. The Shepard, Marcotte, and Schmott. Stokes and Rick Smith on the point. They just fade out of your picture as we get a close up to face off area. Here is Shepard trying to center it. Judd has it away. It goes off the skate of Lafleur. Park for Boston. Ahead on the left side. He missed Marcotte, who then cleared it in. And it gets caught up in the sweater of LaPointe. So, no, I've used all the paraphernalia I'm going to use in the left. Ron Andrews wants to know why I didn't use paraphernalia. <laughs> there is Savard with it. Ahead on the left side at center. They struggle for it. Shepard over on the left side off the boards to Marcotte. He shoots it. Dryden clearing it to Lafleur. One minute left in regulation time. Huck is back in Boston territory. There's Shutt going after Park. And again, the Canadians are called for icing. So you have to say, right here at this particular juncture, the Bruins of the upper hand. Well, no question. And you know, the thing is, Danny, I think the pressure is more on Montreal because, you know, it's their home game and, it's, and so forth. And the Canadians, obviously, they haven't been in this position very often where they felt the pressure, you know, be, being tied. Even, uh, you know, most games at home, they're up two or three at this stage of the game. And it's interesting to see they were reacting. They are reacting like a lot of teams. They're dumping the puck out. They're a little bit disorganized. And it's allowing Boston to actually get the momentum. But you're saying at times they look like an ordinary team. <laughs> now the puck into the center ice area. In on the boards they go with 43 seconds left. This has been a grueling Titanic uh, type of struggle. Yeah, it's been a great hockey game, you know. And, and like, you know, this is what we're talking about, the finals. This is what the fans want to see. I mean, I'm biased. I know you are. And, uh, what? <laughs> we're both biased. You have to be, but... What I wanted to see more than anything else was a good final, to see Boston do well. It gives players in, in, around the league a, a hope almost. You can say, well, look, at Boston can beat them, so can we. You know, Canadians have been regarded as invincible, and we're seeing here tonight that they can be played even or, or maybe beaten. Well, they haven't been beaten as yet. Clark took his man. It's shot down. Here's Rattel in over the line, dropping it back to Spock into Rattel off his skate. Into the corner for Robinson. Ahead it goes. Here's Lemaire coming down. The pass intercepted by Schmott. Here's Shutt picking it up over the line. The shot. Canadians in there with Lemaire. Lemaire going to the corner. Rattel has it. Now up it goes to Marcotte. Out over the line. Robinson on it. Gets it over on the wing. Here's Lafleur dashing in there. Lafleur around the net. Taken out of the play. He and Park fall. Regulation time has ended, and it is a 2-2 hockey game. So, the great drama, the great excitement of overtime will be upon us after this respite of 15 minutes or so. In the meantime, we look at the Canadians going up. The shots on goal, 28 to 20 after regulation time. Boston with 28. There's been some fine, fine goal pending in this game. Well, it has. The goal goalies have really taken over in the third period, both of them making one great save after another. So the score at the end of regulation time, Boston 2, Montreal 2. If you're a one-brand beer drinker like myself, nobody's going to talk you into switching over to Molson Diamond just because a lot of the other guys are doing it. Not even when they tell you it's got a smoother taste than your brand. There's only one thing that's going to make you change your mind, and you know it. You gotta judge Diamond for yourself. Look, I did. So go ahead. You be the judge. After all, the other guys can't always be wrong. Bill, the kick is the wrong. Hey, 
Tater with that car to buy. Grow with us. Tater with that knot to tie. Grow with us. Adding on that extra room. Going off to college soon. Come on, everybody, grow with us. Scotia Plan Loans, a low-cost, convenient way to get yourself growing in dozens of ways right now. Come to Scotia Bank and grow with us. Grow with us. Grow with us. Hi again, everyone. Dan Kelly as we head for sudden death overtime in this second game of the Stanley Cup final series, recapping the third period in a great hockey game. Bob Ganey gave the Canadians the lead from Jarvis and Hull at 12-12. Just around the 15-minute mark, Ivan Cornoyer had two sensational tries for a goal. Gary Cheevers making remarkable saves. The Bruins came right back, and they tied the game. Rick Smith scoring from Cashman and McNabb at 15-48. That tied it at 2-2, and now we are on sudden death overtime. Of course, last year, you're, uh, you'll recall, in the fourth and final game of the final series, in Boston, the Canadians won the Stanley Cup in overtime in the fourth game of that series. We're going to have a little bit of an overtime chit-chat with a great star, a Hall of Famer, John Beliveau, and a newcomer to the National Hockey League, rookie Mike Bossy of the New York Islanders. John, if I didn't know you so well, I might say... We could call this interview or this session the old and the new, but uh, I know you're a nice guy and you wouldn't like me to introduce you like that. Uh, Jean is still active, of course, uh, as the vice president with the Montreal Canadiens, a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame. And Jean, you scored uh, one big overtime goal for this Montreal club. That was in the 1969 Stanley Cup semifinals against this Boston yeah, Bruins. I believe Do you remember so it well? Against, against Boston, uh, second overtime. Yeah. Uh, kind of game like tonight. Uh, if I remember right, uh, the score was 3-2. Two to two. Mm -hmm. uh, that puck went around the board, and Fergie ran, uh, I think Ori was playing, and Fergie went after Ori. Ori threw that puck around, and Provo just got it inside the blue line. And I just uh, give it, blowed a little yell. And uh, Green was uh, playing and tried to stop the shot, but I just had time to wrist shot, let it go. And about the same uh, play that uh, Bob Gainey uh, shot to his, uh, for his, uh, his second goal tonight. And that goal won the series against Boston and sent you uh, to the final the against St. Louis, and you won the Stanley Cup that year. went to St. Louis after. Mike Bossy, uh, your first uh, Stanley Cup overtime game uh, was game two of uh, a series earlier this year against the Toronto Maple Leafs, and bingo, you get a goal in it. Yes, I scored uh, the goal in that overtime game. Uh, I had at least three tries to get it in, and uh, the puck kept on bouncing out, and finally I, I was able to swipe it in. Mike, uh, just a sensational season for you. Uh, 53 goals as a rookie, and uh, you're not playing at this point, and I know that has to be disappointing, but, uh, John, what a future this young man has, Adam, well, after a start uh, like that. It's certainly nice to see youngsters with a great talent ahead coming up. It's good for the game, and uh, allow me to take this opportunity to congratulate Mike on this fine year. Uh, he made some uh, great play, great goals, uh, certainly like his wrist shot. <laughs> Gets it away uh, rather quickly, doesn't he? It's certainly nice. Today you see too many slap shots, and especially when a guy has to take a long wind up. That's why you see too many of those slap shots were deflected, because the guys take a long wind up. But it's nice to see uh, young players coming up with such a great wrist shot. John, what about uh, this hockey game so far? It's been, I said, a, a great game. Well, I think it's a, it's a great uh, Stanley Cup game. Uh, it's a, a very tough game uh, out there. Uh, maybe most of the fans don't really notice all the holding there is there tonight. Uh, every time the, there's a player against each other, you see a stick if the player is defending. And it's very tough to uh, uh, carry a player on every play. It reminds me some of the game we had with the Leeds uh, uh, many years back. And, uh, but uh, in a Stanley Cup, when you reach a Stanley Cup final, uh, if you expect that you won't be checked, uh, don't be out there. Don't expect that. The, the Stanley Cup is... Uh, it's hard to get. And, uh, I remember when I was captain, I used to tell the youngsters, uh, we're close with it, maybe only uh, three or four games. It might take many years. I know many great ones who uh, are naming Gadsby for 20 years, yeah. a great hockey player, and never won a Stanley Cup. So uh, you know that you're only three or four games away, and uh, everybody gained a little bit a little more out there. Mike, what are your impressions of uh, this game? Well, it's, uh, it's a nicely played hockey game. Uh, Boston has come back and uh, really played well tonight, uh, considering their performance uh, the other night. And uh, Canadians missed a lot of chances, especially Pierre Mondou in the first period, and uh, Ivan Cournoyer 
uh, in the latter part of the third, and then you had Boston, uh, Zyrosel missed a couple of chances. Uh, it's going to be a, a real tight-checking overtime period, and, and it might even be a fluky goal that wins the, uh, the game. John, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it seems in overtime in recent years, the teams seem to open up more quickly than they used to. It seems to me in uh, 10, 15 years ago, they used to play it more cautiously in overtime. Uh, do I have the right uh, track yeah, on that? Well, you're probably right. I think as a whole, we all recognize that the uh, hockey is uh, maybe a little faster than 10, 15 years ago. And uh, I suppose that uh, both teams try to uh, use the element of surprise, hoping to get a quick goal. And uh, on many occasions, uh, it had happened. Are you looking for uh, both teams to go right after? Well, right the, away? Way, uh, the way they've been playing tonight, they've been checking very close. But I'm sure uh, that uh, they're going to certainly, uh, if the occasion or the opening happen, uh, it's certainly going to be a good try, I'm sure. Mike, uh, one thing, uh, Jerry Cheevers in this hockey game to me has uh, looked like the Cheevers of all well, years ago. He's, he's just been remarkable. Well, Jerry, Jerry is, is a great goaltender, and he... Uh, he likes to challenge the, the hockey players who, who come at him and shoot. And uh, he's had a lot of success with it tonight, especially against Ivan Cornelier once in the third period where he tried to pass it to, uh, to Risebro at the corner of the net. And uh, if he keeps on coming up with the big saves in the overtime period, uh, they just could win the game. But then again, you have uh, Guy Lafleur and, and, and Shutt and Lemaire and Cornelier, who's the fast skaters on the Montreal team that just could uh, break it open. Let's give you fellows an opportunity to say what you think is going to happen and perhaps who's going to win the game and who's going to score the goal. Mike, we'll start with you. You're the young guy and the rookie. Well, uh, Montreal's a heavy favorite, and I, and I, I predict Montreal will, will win it. And, and I maybe give it to uh, Le Fleur, who hasn't had very many chances to score tonight, or uh, Yvan Cornway, who has missed a lot of chances. You go along with that thinking, Mr. Well, Vice President, well, I have no other Montreal choice, Canadians? But, yeah, but I'm going to take the mayor. <laughs> You're going to take Lumiere. Yes. That's Jean Beliveau, and that's Mike Bossy. We thank you, fellows, uh, for bringing back some memories, uh, Jean, of your overtime goal and for Mike's overtime goal of not uh, very long ago, earlier this year in the Stanley Cup playoffs. We'll return with the Stanley Cup 78 in just a moment. How to help provide early warning protection against fire. No two fires begin the same way. Sometimes they start as simply as this. To help protect your family, General Electric developed the Home Sentry Smoke Alarm System. When this sensitive device detects smoke, it sounds a warning, providing time for escape. The GE Home Sentry System. It could help save your family's lives. Canadian General Electric, working to give you your money's worth. Sports on CBC Television. Amateur or professional, men's or women's, team action or individual effort in provincial, national or international events such as the Commonwealth Games taking place in Edmonton in August. CBC brings it to you right here. General Manager of the Minnesota North Stars, a regular on our Stanley Cup final telecast. Lou, a quick comment from you on the third period of regulation time. Well, Dick, it was a fine play period, really tight checking, as uh, Jean Bellabeau said. Uh, there was a lot of interference, but there were some good chances by both teams, and especially by Cornway, that uh, just seemed to turn the tide at that moment on the ice, because he had two great chances to put the game away for the Canadians. Cheevers with unbelievable save comes up with the, the key stop in the same play, the puck goes on the ice, and Boston <laughs> capitalizes and ties her up. All right, we have the highlight, I believe, of the tying goal that was scored by Rick Smith, only his second playoff goal, Lou, in 57 Stanley Cup games. And this is the rush just after Cheevers had made the save. That's right. The puck is put into Montreal zone, and you have to remember at this time your defensemen are going to gamble. You're down 2-1. It's late in the game. O'Reilly fighting hard in the corner for the puck, and he's backed up by McNabb. As the puck comes out to Cashman, there's a big jam up in front. Now, when you see McNabb and both LaPointe reaching for it, they miss it, and here comes Smith 
sliding in and just fires that puck in the net, ties the score, and as you know right now, uh, the momentum could be on Boston's side. A couple of things that interested me, oh, we're going to see this again from another angle. I think this is almost the angle you had from where you were sitting. Uh, but O'Reilly makes a good play here. He hangs tough after LaPointe had taken him out. And that's what started it with the Bruins maintaining control. Or maybe Here's LaPointe and McNabb both reaching for it, and the puck stays there. And that's Smith following up the play, as you see, and putting it in the low corner by Dryden. Lou, in the game tonight and in that period, as we look at it again, the Canadians had, it seemed to me, a lot of two-on-one chances. And... Most of the time, they didn't get a shot on the net. Uh, it's very strange to see them in this situation. Well, Dick, uh, you know the Canadians are a shooting club, and what they've been doing, they've had uh, numerous two-on-one chances, and, and the puck here has been unloading the shot. I don't believe they've tried one pass across from the two-on-one all night long, and as you said, uh, they aren't getting shots on the net. They, they're hitting the glass, they're missing the net. They're really trying to drive it past uh, Cheevers rather than just going for a, a corner and maybe a rebound as the second man's coming in on the net. And because of this... Uh, the play is, seems to be catching a couple of Canadians deep, and, and Boston has come back numerous times and had chances of their own. I know you noticed something really lafleur marcotte matchup in that third period. Well, uh, Cheever, or I should say Cherry, was keeping Marcotte on Lafleur, and Scotty uh, was keeping Lafleur off the ice until uh, Montreal got the, the lead 2-1. Now they put uh, Marcotte back on the ice, and, and he puts Lafleur out because he knows Marcotte's going to check Lafleur, not thinking about scoring as much. So. When you're leading, you want to put uh, your scorers out there hoping that they're going to be checked and time's going to run out on them. But now you go in the overtime. Now what do you say? If I'm Scotty, I start Lafleur because he can win it. If I'm uh, Don Cherry, I start Marcotte because now the longer it goes, the momentum of the home rink is gone by now. And the longer it goes, uh, Boston's got a, a better chance to win it. Very briefly, Lou, your comments at the top of the show about the way the Bruins should play or you expect them to play, it's pretty well come true. Yeah, they played a lot tighter than they did the other night. They weren't forechecking that second man unless they were sure. They came back with four uh, guys across the blue line forcing Montreal to dump it in. Consequently, Montreal's not getting the open shots that they had the other night. This is the first time this year that the Montreal Canadiens have gone into sudden death overtime. The Bruins, is it is the fifth time for the Bruins. They had two overtime games in their series with the Chicago Blackhawks and a couple in their series with the Philadelphia Flyers. Perhaps only one. I just kind of caught me on that for just a minute. Anyway, the Bruins have been there before this year. The Canadians have not. And they're going into overtime right now with the score tied 2-2. We heard a lot of uh, predictions here a moment ago from Mike Bossy and John Bellavo. Who might score? Uh, let me see. They both picked the Canadians. Who would it Well, I've got to go with the Canadians, and, and I was going to go with Lemaire because he's got the shot, and really uh, he's dangerous all night long, and I expect Lafleur to be watched more. Uh, Lafleur, as you know, is the most dangerous player, but uh, Lemaire is awful dangerous, and he, and he makes his chances count. He did it last year against Boston. One thing that is often said, the team that ties the game late in regulation time has the old cliche momentum going when overtime starts. Does it hold true? Well, I'd have to say right now Boston's very confident. They've come out here, they've played an excellent game, they've showed that they can play the Canadians. They feel that they can beat the Canadians in there, and I think they've got a good chance to do it. The goaltending, I don't know. I, you know, I, I look at goaltenders, Lou, all year in hockey, but when it comes to sudden death overtime, that's got to be something else to stand there. Well, Jerry Cheever's been through it quite a bit, so has Kenny Dryden. They're both professionals. Uh, Cheevers, as you know, it just seems to be a money goaltender, and, and uh, really, uh, it could be a fluke that wins it. I, I don't see either of these goaltenders giving up anything easy, so it could go off someone's shoulder or Steve Blader is sick. It could be a deflection that wins it. I'm going to sit on the fence. I'm going to say if the Canadians win the game, it'll be Steve Shutt of Boston. It'll be Jean Rattel. <laughs> All right, thank you, Lou Nanny. Now, back up to the broadcast booth, and here again, Danny Gallivan. Okay, Lou and, and Dick, and as we mentioned, when we wound up the third period, get into overtime it's punctuated with drama and excitement you went through it in the seventh game against Toronto what did you talk about in the dressing room did you say did your coach say okay boys let's storm after them right away uh yeah we talk about getting the goal early there's say you can say hello to Moose Jaw again I think they're probably getting sick and tired of seeing me Danny uh what you, what you try and do, of course, is be confident going in. And one of the things we said, well, listen, we know what's in here. Who's going to be the hero? And I'm sure both teams are, are saying that type of thing where they're both, you know, trying to build each, each other up, you know, confident-wise. And then I think both teams are going to try and end it early. As we talked about, Montreal maybe have to go with three defensemen. You don't want it to drag on too long, or I'm sure they don't. Boston, the same thing. They want to get that first goal. Don't not give Montreal too many good chances. So... 
I think both teams are going to come out storming, or at least attempt to. Well, Chico, the last time Boston-Montreal went into overtime here at the Forum in Montreal was April the 24th, 1969. Belleville scored. That's his only overtime goal at 11.28. That was into the second overtime period. Montreal 2, Boston 1. On that occasion, right now, as we get set for overtime play, in this the second game of the 1978 final series, the score is tied at two goals. We have LeMaire going out with LeFleur and shot, and it is Shepard, Marcotte, and Schmutz, the forward line for Boston. Play is underway, and here's Savard, scooping it ahead. It's picked up on the left side by Milbury. It's in over the line, Robinson going after it, and there is an offside. I see Bill Nyrob is not on the bench, Danny, so it might be something a little more serious than we anticipated. Let me ask you this. Do you think Scotty Bowman will go along with three defensemen rather than use Lupien or Bouchard? I think he will for a time, but if it drags on, he's gonna have, Savard looks very tired out there. Here's Robinson up on the left side, and it goes to shut. There's the shot! And that went off at a peculiar angle off the left glove hand of Chibis. Shepard, his pass knocked down. Lafleur over to shut with the mare. Broken up at the line by Milbury. Lafleur back handing it in. We're into overtime. Now Park got rid of it. Down the ice it goes. This will be an icing against the Boston Bruins. How about that shot by Shutt? What made it difficult was the fact that Shutt, again, somebody was had a stick on him and he didn't get all the puck. So you, it's kind of like a, a change up in baseball. You're expecting the big boomer. And see here, Brad takes a little bit off the shot. And as you can see, it just caught Jerry on the, the edge of the glove. And oh, what the heck, as long as it goes wide, it doesn't matter if it's by a foot or, or three feet or an inch or as long as you get a piece of it, Jerry that, did the job. That's that power of positive. That's right. That's what you have to do in a situation like this. Canadians, everybody. Up, there's a shot by LeMaire right on. That was almost into the net, but Cheevers was there. Here's Park, clearing it off the boards. At center, LeMaire has it. Twisting and turning, getting some skating room. A good move by LeMaire, takes the shot. The rebound, big rebound, right in front the net. And Smith finally cleared it. Here's Lafleur back into the mayor. He shoots at his off the leg. And Rattel has it for Boston. Rattel to Rick Smith. Into the center ice area to the Canadians line. Robinson giving it to Lemaire. Lemaire shooting it off the leg. And Park is back there in his own zone. Canadians have made changes. Park ahead to Rick Smith. Off his stick. And it's swept over the boards at the Boston bench by Guy Lapointe. Boston weathered the storm there. As you know, they, they started uh, shut the Fleur and Lemaire, hoping probably to get that early goal. They got a lot of good chances, but Boston weathered it. And now Boston probably will attempt to throw a little more offense into the game. They've been kind of playing this whole first uh, overtime in their own end. And it's tough to score from your end of the ice. It's definite now that Bowman is going along with three defense. Yes, yep. He just sent uh, Savard out. Robinson went to the bench. LaPointe is the other defenseman. Here's LaPointe on the right side, rolling it ahead. Rick Smith has it for Boston ahead. It goes to O'Reilly. In on the left side. Cashman being watched by LaPointe. It's center. Puck loose in from the net. McNabb was tied up. Here's Mondu down on the right side. A pass. Raja Ubikini. There's the shot. Sheevers. He looked as if he were going to leave the rink. <laughs> well, like I say, Jerry likes to get involved and put on a little bit extra, and that's that's good. You know, that keeps a goalie in the game, and uh, he does it well. And he's playing extremely well. I'm really happy for him, too, because... Well, he, ha he has a reputation for being a money goalie. Yeah, he likes money as much as any goalie in the league, I think. Well, if that's the case, all you people are excellent. <laughs> now O'Reilly in on the boards against Ganey. Mondu is bumped by Doak. Here's Doak clearing it to the point. Savard has it. Over it goes to Ray Jaul and the Bruins, four of them coming to center. Over to O'Reilly. Across the line. He loses it. McNabb is going to keep it in. He was bumped after getting clear of it by Ganey. Now it's the point. Ahead to Savard. Back to the point. Dangerously in front of the net. He gets away. The point down on the right side. 
clearing it in. Here's Cashman with shot after him to the other side to O'Reilly. Kept in by LaMare, he lost it. McNabb to O'Reilly, down to the line. Picked up and wheeling away on the right side, a ski shot, he gets away from the check. And it was O'Reilly who went flying. Pass goes to the open wing, and now Brad Park clearing it ahead. Oh, it almost got by Robinson with Schmatz getting in behind him. Now it's Severn at center. Four Canadians to the Boston line. A pass broken up by Mark Cox. Over on the left side, McNabb elects to go to the Boston bench. Here's a pass off the board for shot going in. Park sweeps it away. Shot again to Lafleur. Now it goes to Robinson, cleared by Shepard. And it's into the center ice area. We're nearing the fourth minute mark in the overtime. It's tied at two goals. There's Lafleur moving in. Off the board it goes. Lafleur after it again, and the Bruins tip it down on the right side. Here's Schmutz. Schmutz trying to tee it up. He couldn't center it. Robinson in the corner, clearing it. Lafleur, his pass off a stick. Lafleur chasing it. And it's broken up by Dope. Down the ice it goes. And the Canadian supporters and some of the Montreal players thought there should have been icing on that. Oh, there's Cornboy in bumping Jonathan. And there's an offside. Good call by Code Bashar. What uh, obviously many of the fans here missed was the fact that a Montreal player tipped it on the way down. And I know you caught it and I caught it, but some of the fans obviously didn't. By and large, these officials do an outstanding job. But you, you consider the, the pressure they're under, particularly in a game like this, overtime. Well, they are, you know. And the replay usually bears out that they were correct, and that's quite a tribute to them. Because they're under as much pressure as the players, really. Now Robinson up on the left side. Jarvis couldn't pick it up. Rattel ahead to Middleton in over the line. And the Canadians defenseman of Robinson will point back there. Here's LaPointe chasing it over to the right side. He'll get clear of it and note over the line. He couldn't. Now Ganey. And it goes to Ray Jano. Here's Ray Jano get break in the goal. He fired it. Blocked by Chivas. The first big scoring opportunity in the overtime. Back it goes and it's done over the line. And that for the Canadians, their 25th shot on goal. Boston with 28. We have a term we use among the goalies. You say the goalie's on the puck. That means he's, he's positioning himself well. He's watching it. The puck looks like three feet large. And here again, Jerry's just in super position. He's out, see, he's in front of the crease. And really, Houle didn't have much to shoot at. And with the defenseman coming back, forcing him to hurry. And here you'll see Jerry outside the crease. Perfect position. Nothing to shoot at. And just a good save, you know. He, he's just been so solid in there. It's... It's really good to see because I know he really wanted to do well in this series after last year, and he sure done it. It is O'Reilly. Over on the right side, Cashman on the other wing. McNabb at center for Boston. Lafleur, Lemaire, and shut for the Canadians. Here is Savard. Up it goes. Shut is over the line with Lemaire. Poked away by Park. Boston coming back. O'Reilly couldn't penetrate on the left side. He gets it again, over it goes, and Savard plays it off the boards. Out it goes, Lemaire. Try to get it across the line. There's Shut chasing after it. And the Bruins take over. At center, it's Cashman across the line. Takes the shot, and Dryden held up. Another sharp play by the goalie there. Not so much that it was a difficult save, but he gloved the puck and didn't allow a rebound. And in a situation like this, you just don't want to give the opposition any more chances than at all possible. And I, I think you'll see both goalies freezing the puck whenever they're able to. Here, here, here it is again. It's quite a ways out, but like I say, the secret here was Kenny grabbing the puck and, and holding it for no rebound. Face so off to the right of Dryden. Scotty Bowman has sent out Cournoyer, Lombert, and Jabez. Cashman, McNabb, and O'Reilly still up front for Boston and Smith on defense. It's back at the line. Cornoyer chasing it to the far left side. Doak is the other defenseman for Boston. He broke up Lombero, got it a second time. Cornoyer racing after Cashman. Bondu 
Tries to get it, but it was way by him down the ice net. Definitely going to be icing against the Boston Bruins. And five minutes and 34 seconds have gone by in this first overtime. And there is John Cherry. So in this series, we have two men, 44 years of age, each of them. And their coaching record over recent years, that coaching record has been sensational by both Bowman and Cherry. Winners all the way, both of them. Backhand shot, he's pulled by Another shot, two big saves. There's Robinson shooting it. And it went off with Flair's leg wide. Great chances. I don't even got a loose ball. The guy in it. And an open net. Tom Bears shot it wide. Here's Robinson shooting it in the right in front. Another shot. Another save. Oh, unbelievable. What a remarkable goal tending by Cheevers. Have you ever seen the like of that? that? Oh, that's just the greatest. I mean, Jerry's just doing everything. He's, he must have stopped. I don't know if you could keep count of how many shots he's got. Let's see if they'll show us here in the replay. There's the first one. Now the rebound. He comes out again. Cuts the angle down. Stops one. The rebound. Up in the air. It's going to come back to the point here. Now watch him turn around. Robinson shoots it. He gets his left pad on it in the corner. Now Boston trying to get a whistle here. They're not able to. The puck's going to go around. Jerry's lost his stick. It's kept in. He dives across. Stops one. You think he's out of trouble. He just picks himself up. You know, the puck doesn't come out front here again. And a minute to Cornway. One save. It's loose. Another great save. And, you know, what can you say? It's just incredible. The puck won't go in. Absolutely phenomenal the work by Cheevers. Here's the player taking his shot. And it hit a leg. Here's Benny to get again on goal. Shoots on time. Rises to the heights for the Canadian. Here's the first chasing it on the right side. Robinson trying to get in front. And Park cleared it away. They're going all out. They want to end this just as soon as possible. But the goalies refuse to give in. Now Park shooting it into the center ice area. Off Middleton stick back in a goes and LaPointe. Lobbed it high into the air. Park beating a pass in on the left side. Jonathan moving in against Robinson who cleared it to the other side. Middleton trying to come up with it. Robinson gets it again. Out on the left side to center. O'Brien feeding it ahead. Brittell. Penetrates the line. Rattel taking a shot. And that's blocked by LaPointe. Canadians, good move by Steve Sutt. Here's Sutt coming in over the line. He's down the line. And what a reaction by the crowd. Here's Lemaire coming back for the Canadians with Rajay Oud. That shot ricochets off the leg. And an offside. Wow, great, great excitement. <laughs> I know uh, Mr. and Mrs. Nairob are probably watching this game back in Minneapolis, and we have a report that Bill had a wound under his right eye, nothing serious. He's gone to the hospital and obviously be lost for the rest of this game. Here the replay is Steve shot with a puck. This is a hook here, and see, he doesn't really go down, and here's another little trip, and you know, in a different time, a different situation, there may be penalties, but in a game like this, you can't really call something like that. Not that... What infraction is going to bring about a penalty in the overtime? <laughs> Good question. Score is tied at two goals. To the point, over to Savard. Now loose puck over on the far side. Cashman is racing up, taken out of the play by Jarvis. There is the point off the boards. Ganey starting up on the left side. Ganey. Taken out of the play by O'Brien. O'Brien has played some fine hockey since coming into the game in the second period. Number 28 for Boston. Now O'Reilly going down to the line. Here's Cashman. It's knocked off his stick and Ganey starts away with Ray Jan. Oh, Ganey in over the line. Here's Ganey trying to get in front. Poked away by Rick Smith. The Bruins get it out over the line. Savard takes a look over to Robinson. Robinson into the center ice area, hits the Boston line. He weaves into the corner. Here's Robinson getting in front of the backhand shot. A scramble! Kyra! And again, Chivas holds it up. Tougher save than it looked like. With Robinson cutting out front, the important thing there for the goalie is to hold his ground. 
And Jerry not only held the ground to make the first save, but he remained stationary, and Robinson wasn't able to jab him in. Here you'll see a great burst of speed here by Larry Robinson. And he, he handles the puck real well, as you'll see here, Danny. He comes out front, he shoots, and there's Jerry on the puck again, gets that leg in, in the right place, and they're not able to jam it by him. Chico, the potency of the Canadians' offense in this overtime is reflected in the shots on goal. At the end of three period, Boston at 28. Canadians had 20. Now Montreal has 31 and Boston has 30. So Canadians are out shooting them 11 to 2 in the overtime. And it's still tied at two goals. Schmutz rolling it into the center ice area. 11 minutes and 34 seconds left in the first overtime. Here is Schmutz trying to center it. It goes in to Dryden. He Shepherd was there looking for a loose puck. I've seen these games so often, I'm sure you have too, Danny, where one team completely controls it, can't seem to put the puck in the net, the other team will come down, get one good chance, and end it. And it, it, it's just incredible. I, I don't think I've ever seen a team with so many good chances in the puck, you know, mainly because of Jerry, just hasn't gone in the net. and. Uh, it's got to be a good feeling for Boston. They got to feel that they uh, they kind of have nine lives tonight. Well, in this overtime, Cheevers has kept them in there. Now Canadians shot into the center ice area. Long pass. Here's Lafleur chasing it. He missed it into the corner puck, laying it ahead on the left side, and, and it'll it be was, icing, uh, icing, uh, icing against the Montreal Canadiens. Lafleur was going in the corner there, Dan, to pick he up the He missed it completely, didn't he? Correct. So again, I, another example of I missed it until the official called it, and then I realized, here you'll see it. But the officials are really sharp, and he misses the puck there, and it should be icing, and Claude Béchard does a good job of calling it. Every face-off is important, and that was a big break for the Bruins. The Bruins with the defense of Milbury and parking over the Canadians' line. Smart. In the bird around Lafleur against the boards, watched closely by Shepard, and again we will get a face-off in Canadian territory, and this has to be advantageous to the Boston Bruins getting all these face-offs down there in Montreal territory. Lafleur and Schmutz move too quickly. And now let's see what's going to happen from in front. Savard gets it out. He hit Lafleur. Lafleur ahead on the left side. Shut. Jams the shot in there wide. In along the boards. Milbury. Here's Steve Shut with it. Takes the shot. Cheevers is getting a face off in his zone. And now Montreal out shooting. Boston 32 to 30. Rapidly approaching the longest overtime game this year, Dan. The longest game was went 10 minutes and 17 seconds, and Boston beat Chicago 4 to 3. Peter McNabb got the winner. In recent years, you know, overtimes do not go very, very long. The way I guess the hockey is played today, you have defensemen or offensive men, and the teams go out there and they want to get it over with. That's right. Now here's the flu over for Lemaire. Lemaire trying to center it against Rattel. It's back on the left side. Jonathan hands it off to Middleton. Middleton has the Bruins' best scoring opportunity in this overtime. And now the Canadians with Deal a point ahead it goes. Lemaire shooting it. Oh, that was a blistering drive. It was wide. Now off the glass. Gainey keeping it in. Gainey off the bench, close to the corner. Gainey trying to jam it out in front of you. Gainey at the side of that. Smith is Puck is under Smith. Face off will be to the right of Cheever. That was a lot of hustle by Gainey. You notice he just came off the bench and went in there. Yeah, he's, you know, he's one of their hardest workers. And Rick Smith, who we're looking at, we talked about it earlier, but he's just played on just a great game. And here again, he's out front where he should be. He sees the puck is loose there, and although Montreal fans didn't agree, I think it was a good call that he didn't get a penalty and he was able to tie it up. And another good effort by Rick Smith, who's having himself a great game tonight. 
saw it's a sweltering atmosphere that we have at the Montreal Forum, literally and figuratively. The tension, you can cut it, and it's hot. Now back it goes to, oh, backhand shot by Jarvis, weak shot wide. Into the corner, it's cleared on the left side. By Milbury, down into the Canadian zone, Robinson tried to hit Ganey, it's off his stick. There's Park being watched by Jarvis, Jarvis falling. Park, off the board. Rattel dropping it back for Jonathan. Jonathan at the line, he's got it going in on goal. Great play by Jonathan, but he couldn't control it. Canadian starting on the left side. Jarvis taking over the play by Park. Middleton off the board, speed to the head. Hard, clearing at the center. Here's Rattel, intercepted by Robinson. Robinson coming down. Robinson, oh, takes the shot. And Cheevers had it covered all the way. Now it's back, go over the line. From the stick of the Canadian player, no icing, of course, on that. And Sever lays it up on the left side. Now there's a lead pass, Mondu. He's bumped. O'Reilly playing it to Cashman over on the right side with McNabb in on the line. Hot shot by Cashman. Oh, he has plenty on that one. Bumper saved and it looked. Kenny driving the screen a little bit. And Cashman got good wood on it. And again, not only did Kenny make the save, but he hung on for the rebound here. Again, you'll see it here and he gets good wood on it. Kenny made a good glove save, and of course, then he hung on for the rebound, which is what you want to do. There you'll see the Bruin player. A rebound there could have been deadly. Chico, we are now into the longest open time of the 1978 playoffs. The previous was 10 17. There you see Ganey upending his check in the center ice area. Austin, everybody up. O'Reilly on the board. Cornwallier getting it out to Lambert with Cornwallier. In it goes. Cornwallier. In behind the net, Cornwallier centered it, and it's gobbled up by O'Reilly. Knocked off his stick by Lemaire. Dope gets it to the line. Canadians keeping it in. It's knocked down in front by Lemaire, and he couldn't get a shot away. Canadians supplying the pressure. Here's Lemaire. He falls. The Bruins out on the right side. O'Reilly with the nab and Cashman. O'Reilly trying to get through there, and the point drifted it into the air. The mayor couldn't pick up the pass from the stick. Well, Lambert couldn't from the stick of Lemaire. Now along the board. Is that the line? Smith over to O'Reilly. O'Reilly cut by two players. Now O'Reilly digging to the right side. And feeds it finally over the glass. Well, you wonder how long Montreal can keep the sustained pressure. They've just been going and going right from the opening face-off, and still it's tied. And I say, like I say, going with the three defensemen, you wonder if they couldn't be a little bit tired. We've seen a lot of Lafleur and Shutt, so it, looks, it appears that Scotty's been going with primarily maybe eight, ten players. Robinson, Dumondu ahead on the right side. Lapointe cleared it in over the line. Out it comes. Here's Lafleur with Mondu. Lafleur drops it back. And Smots has it. Over on the left side. Oh, the point just stopped that. It was headed for Marcotte, who would have had a clear path in on the left side. They struggle on the boards. Mondu playing at the center. Marcotte rips a shot into the corner. There is Robinson. Or checking number 19 for Boston Shepard. Motionless is Robinson. He takes a look. Now Lafleur. Lafleur, rink wide pass for Mondu. Mondu over the line, puts on the brakes, takes the shot, and ricochets off the stick to the far corner. And Marcotte, he hits Shepard with it. Shepard shooting it, and Dryden grabbed that, and that is Boston's 30-second shot on goal. Robinson leading a four-man Montreal attack. Lafleur shoots. <laughs> You know, 
Scotty Bowman. This is the first time I've ever seen him do it. He left the bench, and he has gone down there to congratulate McClure. And, of course, the Canadian bench empty, and Montreal getting a tremendous ovation. And they realized how important this game was and what a struggle the Boston Bruins put up here tonight. So the Canadians up to nothing in the series. There's Robinson. And we'll have a chance for you to describe it later. I read your last statement where you said Montreal knew they were in a game. I think that was indicated by the fact that Scotty, for the first time, came out on the bench. I know. When so I'm in a, the, probably the tougher games, Robinson. you always seem to have a little more enthusiasm. Here's that, here's the overtime goal. Given to Guy Lafleur, and he fires from the top of the circle, and again, he shoots the puck so well, just misses Jerry's left pad. And again, it wasn't, I mean, it's hard to say Jerry stopped so many great ones, and you might say, well, what was he doing on that one? But Lafleur, who I've always said, you take velocity and accuracy, Guy Lafleur is number one, and he indicated it there again. Here's the play. There it is, Chico. Oh, yeah. Larry Robinson makes the play again, gives it to Gee, and now we'll see exactly where he shoots the puck from. Just outside the top of the circle. And again, a bullet. Low and just the perfect spot, just below the goalie's glove. And I guess that comes as no surprise. So he has done it so often. Super great hockey players, they rise to the occasion, don't they? Uh, they have to. I guess that's why you consider them great. And a big article on Guy today in the yeah, paper. And, well, the third star. You know, like I say, Jerry you know it as well Cheever. as I do. Uh, well, Jerry Cheevers was selected as the, the third star, no question about it. And uh, he didn't stay out to take his bow. We'll return with Stanley Cup 78 in just a moment. What's it take to brew a great light beer? You gotta have heart. Mazel, mazel, mazel heart. If you're gonna brew a beer with great taste, there's only one place to start. Mosel Light has got heart, heart, heart. Mazel miles of heart, heart, heart. Mosel Light has got heart. Had one yet? A couple of chaps named Irvin and Kelly have enjoyed this hockey game tonight, I'm sure, equally as well as the viewers have from coast to coast in Canada and the United States. The Canadians winning it 3-2 to two in overtime. That's Guy Lafleur's second overtime goal. He scored one against the Vancouver Canucks a few years ago here at the Forum. Dan Kelly, I, I kind of wondered on the goal. Chico said, well, you might look at Jerry Cheevers and say, what was he doing on it? I wondered if Cheevers maybe thought the shot was going to the far side. I think when you have a hockey player, Dick, of Guy Lafleur's ability, that's uh, goaltender's... Uh, problem. He doesn't know what he's going to do, and uh, I think Cheevers may have been thinking that Lafleur was going for the wide side as well, and Lafleur rocketed it by him on the short side, and uh, you can't really fault Cheevers. What a hockey game he played, and I was really delighted to see him. You know, one of the old veterans on that hockey club, and he really came up tall and just played himself a great game, and I thought the interesting thing, Dick, is Lafleur, as we look at the goal, and it's interesting that the big uh, Canadian guns, Robinson and Lafleur, a couple of them, Robinson with the pass, here's Lafleur's shot, right under Cheever's glove as he beats him to the short side. And I thought the interesting thing, Dick, Lafleur had not played as That's well right. here yeah. tonight as he has in many a hockey game. Let's hear it. Should Ken Dryden have had an assist? He handled the, the puck. Certainly. Got <laughs> it to Robinson. Over on the right side to Lafleur, and uh, the low shot just under Cheever's glove on the short side. But the interesting thing, Lafleur looking... Uh, well, ordinary tonight, uh, while he usually looks superlative, but he comes up and gets the winning goal. He certainly did not dominate the game, Dan. You're right, the way he did here with the opener on Saturday. That's got to be a tough one for the Bruins, but I don't know. A win here tonight, it would have been a completely new series. And really, for three periods, I thought they outplayed the Canadians, but they certainly did not in the overtime. No, it was uh, really a question of how much time it was going to take or if Boston was going to get a break because the Canadians just keep seem to be keep coming on and on and you wondered how long they could hold on. The only thing I thought was, well, Boston's going to get a breakaway sometime <laughs> and maybe upset the apple cart. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great hockey game. Dan, thank you very much. Look forward to working with you in Boston on Thursday night. Dan will be there along with Chico Rush and Lou Nanny. 
as we bring you game three of the Stanley Cup final. The Canadians have taken the 2-0 lead on the goal by Guy Lafleur in overtime. Larry Robinson assisting at 13.09. So the final score tonight, the Montreal Canadiens 3, the Boston Bruins 2. Good night from Montreal. On CBC Hockey Night in Canada, brought to you by Ford of Canada, on behalf of Ford and Mercury dealers from coast to coast, ahead and participating retailers and record companies in Canada, the Bank of Nova Scotia with nearly a thousand branches across Canada to serve you, Molson, brewers of Molson Canadian lager beer. Hockey Night in Canada is protected by copyright and is intended solely for the enjoyment and entertainment of our viewing audience. Unauthorized use in whole or in part without written permission is expressly forbidden. take notes on your best white shirt with fantastic ben you could because it erases this easy without leaving a trace this incredible development of space age technology has hundreds of uses around the home and office it writes like any standard pen but correction is this easy fantastic pen erases from paper paint unfinished wood most surfaces even your husband's best white shirt if you write you cannot be without fantastic pen the world's first correctable pen two dollars or less As a country kid, I sailed a route made of hickory poles and twine. All I took with me was some cold RC to cool the hot sunshine. Though years have flown, I should have known there's a...